Hey everyone, welcome to our tutorial on handling user interactions. Here we're just going to explore a couple of the user interactions that we'll be using in our game, how to detect them and how to respond to them. So our tasks are going to be to first learn about how to monitor events, then we'll respond to quit events, we actually already took a quick look at that, then we'll respond to mouse clicks and finally to button presses. So let's head to the code and get started. All right, so um, like I said, we've actually already kind of covered one of the events and that is going to be the window.close, but we haven't really covered events much in general. So we're not gonna be creating anything outside of here for now. So in your while loop here, your main game loop, there will be a series of events that take place. There could be multiple events happening at once. For example, if the user is holding down a key and pressing their mouse, um, there could be lots of things happening, okay? So what we do is that's why we have a while loop because there could be multiple events. If we only do an if statement, that's just gonna check one of them, which is not what we want. So by using the window.poll event, this is going to uh, check to see if there are any events happening that are related to this particular window. Technically, you can have multiple windows with SFML. Again, that's a bit beyond the scope of this course, but for each new window, you'll want to poll events within that one. Again, we just have the one window to work with, so that should be fine here. So you create an SF event object and you pass it into the poll event. That way we have access to it within the while loop. So um, here we want to be checking to see what events um, are occurring. We only really need to check the ones that we're interested in. For example, if we're just handling mouse clicks, we don't need to do anything else. But at the very least, you should have this one that's polling for the event closed. Okay, otherwise you can run into issues with your game just continually running. Okay, so um, an event will have many possible types associated with it. In this case, this is the events.type SF event closed, and we're just closing the window. Okay. We'll also want to respond to mouse clicks. So when you click on the enemy, we want to decrease some energy and also we'll respond to key presses. So at the very end, when you want to restart the game, you press the space bar and it will restart everything. So let's first work on the mouse clicks. What we'll do is we'll do an L if event.type um, oh, actually, you know what? That should be an else if, and we need these. Okay, getting kind of confused with some Python code. Okay, so we'll do this, okay? And then we'll say else if events.type is going to be equal to, and here's where we want to listen for a mouse button press. So we'll pull the event sf event mouse button pressed. Okay, we're not going to worry about the release or anything like that. We just want to check to see if the mouse button is pressed. Okay, so if the mouse button is pressed, we can pretty much do whatever we want. We're not going to check for collision detection or anything yet. We'll cover that much later on in this course. We will be covering it eventually though. And um, for now, what we can just do is print something else. We'll say, say standard, C out, uh, we'll say mouse button pressed. Okay, and then we um, will do a new line, I guess. Okay, what we can do, we could actually just do the end L. Uh, so it should actually be standard end L. Okay, um, so um, if we're checking to see if the mouse button's pressed and we're printing that out, that's good. Uh, we also, you know what, actually, let's go ahead and run this and demonstrate this. So we go to terminal, clear, we'll recompile it, dot slash main. Okay, you can see that I'm clicking on the screen and we're detecting the mouse button press is being printed out there every time. Note how um, if I'm clicking outside of the screen, nothing is registering though. I'm kind of clicking all over the terminal right now. Nothing's happening, okay? That's because we're only detecting mouse clicks within this particular window. That is the desired behavior, at least for our game, okay? Cool stuff. So we know how to detect mouse clicks. Um, again, we'll get into the exact collision detection later to check to see if we're clicking on an object, but we'll also want to monitor keyboard presses. So um, we'll do else if the event.type is going to be equal to sf event key pressed. Okay, so um, we actually don't launch immediately right into checking to see if the space bar key was pressed, what we should be checking to see is if the event was a key press in general. Okay, then we can go into that further and see if the key that was pressed was a space bar. And we may as well implement that logic here, we're going to need it later on anyway. So we'll say something like if sf uh, keyboard 
is key pressed and we'll do SF keyboard space okay so um, let's just make sure that you can see the whole thing so this might seem a little roundabout uh, we have to see if the keyboard is key pressed is called and with this will take in a key to check to see if it's pressed specifically we're just checking to see if the space bar is pressed okay if that key space equal to true we'll just print out something like space bar pressed um, space bar pressed okay and then we'll end the line all right, so you can also check for other keys. For example, if you're doing like a, a movement game where you press the arrow keys to move around, you'll probably want to check for up arrow, down arrow, left and right, and so on and so forth. In our case, we're only interested in if the space key is pressed. Okay, so if this returns true, that means the space key is pressed, and we can print out the statement. Okay, so we'll go again back to terminal. Let's recompile, let's rerun. Okay, and um, I'm pressing some other keys. Nothing's happening. As soon as I press spacebar, then you can see that spacebar is pressed. It's also still detecting mouse clicks, and of course, it's detecting close events as well. All right, so that's actually pretty much as complex as the uh, user interaction handling is going to go in our game. Like I said, you can make this really complex if you want, but we're only really going to be listening for these two commands, uh, three if you include the window close. All right. So feel free to check out some of the other keys, um, see if you can implement like a little kind of movement thing if you want, if you're feeling adventurous, otherwise we're going to end the section here. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how to monitor time, as that's going to be an important feature of our game. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.